Welcome to Protecting the Legacy, a show sponsored by the Boutique Cigar Association. Grab a cigar and your favorite beverage and join us for the next hour as we tackle some of the most difficult topics in our industry. Now, please join your hosts, Kerr Viajante, Armin Caprellian, and Dr. Gabby Caffey as we dive into this week's hot topics. Happy Friday, everybody. Protected Legacy here. I think Gabby's got his mood music on in the background. Yeah, how'd you know? Because I, I, I could hear it. I got two ears. That's like, so sorry, <laughs> sorry. The audio was a dead giveaway. Uh, what is going on, everybody? We are Protected Legacy. It's the Friday night, 8 p.m. We're good to see you. We got uh, a great guest this evening. We're really excited uh, to have our great guest our wonderful guest. Uh, but before we get to Dr. Gabby Caffey to do the great introductions, I'm going to see what my man Armin is drinking and smoking. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm excited for today. I feel like I'm back in school. I'm learning everything with a clean slate. Uh, we've got the guru on, so I know it's going to be an incredible learning experience for me tonight. So uh, I figured I'd get one of my house blends. Uh, I didn't go with anything shorter because I know we're going to fill up the slot with a lot of material. So I'm going to go with one of my house blends. And, of course, I have to accompany it with my usual coffee and water. Sorry, it might be a little boring, but it is what it is. That's all right. You're doing the coffee and water tonight. Yeah. Is it the diet? Yeah. <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. it's it's, it's Just lie diet. to me. Lie to me. It's, it's the okay. diet. <laughs> Dr. Kathy, what's going on, man? What are you drinking and what are you smoking, my good friend? It's Friday night, guys. I'm smoking uh, a Stokey Road cigar. It's I'm down to the end. It's a double Ooh. Maduro box pressed. And uh, I've heard a lot about that cigar. The big Tony. It's, it's a firecracker, but really, really good, clean, strong tobacco, you know? And I'm, I'm pairing it with some uh, cognac. Don't get too excited, Armin. I'm, I'm actually cheating on you today. Oh, look no, at that. you cheated. Yes. Ooh, nice. oh, is a, uh, actually, a French cognac. I feel betrayed. And I'm just, ch brother, I had the worst. Oui, oui. Week. This week felt like it was two, three weeks long, and a lot of good things have been happening lately. And um, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me on tonight. Oh, no, it was really good to have you, Gabby. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> it's nice to always have you. It's on. always great talking to Gabby when you catch him off guard like that because he always thinks he's like one of the hosts and the guests all in one. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'd really like to thank you for having me on this evening, guys. <laughs> Gabby, you're one of the hosts. I'd like to thank myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, Gabby, uh, what am I drinking and smoking? With? Thank you for asking. I am yeah. smoking the uh, Sweetgrass Gringo. The Candela Connecticut Barber Pole, the very unique, only one of its kind, and I am drinking a Corona. Nice. That's I need to, You're both smoking a cigar that I haven't smoked yet. That's cool. I, I need to have a beer. I know. I still got to get you on. Leave me alone. Um, I, I do. I have to. Listen, we're competing with Donald Trump's live tonight. He just hopped on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I needed to drink a beer tonight. I was telling Gabby, I said, it's been like Gabby. It's been a long week. Yeah. Been yeah. a long, long week. And I do have some whiskey. I do have some whiskey. But I, I Ooh, feel very that, nice. But if I drink whiskey right now, I think in about 30 minutes, I would start swinging and everything. Uh, so <laughs> it's been one of those weeks. So I'm going to stick to beer. I'm it glad makes I'm me, in New York, brother. makes me happy and sleepy. So, thank uh, you to Ted. He just said, you know what? Drink whatever you want with your cigar. So thank you, Ted. I, exactly. I no, I wasn't criticizing you, Doug. I was just, I mean, our, uh, uh, Armin, I was just asking you if it was I part know, of your diet. I know. You're awesome, buddy. man. I love you, bro. Listen. Hey, before I get to Gabby, Armin, my favorite drink to pair with my cigars is coffee. Above anything else, above beer, liquor, scotch, whatever, I love pairing cigars with coffee. It's my favorite drink. I'm with you, brother. So, that was not a criticism. So, oh, without further ado, since uh, Gabby is drinking some yes, yes, yes. French liquor, Gabby Caffey, take it away. Guys, good evening. Today, uh, you know, I'm going to keep the introduction short, sweet, and powerful. All right. 
there's very few guys in our industry that actually have the ability to build brands where the brand takes on a life of its own and it it's 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 i think it's multiple factors coming together it's uh brand development the vision the knowledge of, of how to actually go about from a to z and uh i'm not the only one that feels that way i think cigar journal also feels that way they uh, awarded our dear friend umberto arias uh a beautiful prize this year man congratulations on being the I'll man that. Uh, Cigar mm. Journal literally uh, gave you the award for being the exact title uh, escapes me, but there's outstanding, very, outstanding art. Yeah, I mean, there's very few people historically that have won that award. And wow, when you look at a, a Cigar Journal being a global magazine, not just here in the U.S., that's quite an achievement. So tonight we have Umberto Arias. Umberto, thank you for being on the show. There's a lot to talk about. You are like uh, you're the you're the first guy anybody should call if they wake up one day and say, "I want my own brand. I want to start a company. What do I do?" Welcome to the show, man. We're honored to have you here. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks for sir. having me. Thank you so much. I appreciate the invite. Uh, Umberto, before we get going, man, uh, please tell the viewers your website, how to get in touch with you. What's the best way to reach you? Oh, uh, listen, uh, cigarpackagedesign.com. Uh, you can uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram is the same handle for everything. So that's uh, usually the uh, the best way to get a hold of me. Absolutely. Thank you very much, man. Um, I know on your website, you do show some of the work that you've done. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that's not on there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's like the mechanic, you know, the, the mechanic's car is always broken. So, you know, I get to work on my website whenever I have any downtime. But, uh, you know, client work comes first. That's fantastic, man. Uh, I want to, if I may, uh, ask the first question. Have let's, go right ahead, Gabby. Let's go back Please. seven years, I'm right? Gonna, I've, I've never been in the industry. I want to get into it. The, the biggest problem I see in our industry is that people that aren't really a part of the industry don't really know that someone like you exists. So what they do is they go to some graphic designer outside of the industry. And then when they try to work with a printer, they don't speak the same language. The job comes out messed up. What, what do you think? Um, well, first of all, how long have you been in the industry? Number one, what inspired, uh, what inspired you to get in? And number three is, do you find a lot of people calling you now after this, uh, the past three, four years of accolades? You know, um, I, I got into, I got into the, uh, the cigar industry because um, uh, I am originally from Nicaragua. So uh, I have, uh, I have a lot of fond memories of, uh, you know, my grandfather smoking cigars and, you know, the smell just kind of takes you back and transports you. And uh, my my first really dive into the cigar industry, and, and this is a true story, um, I had a friend uh, refer me to uh, this guy named Willie Herrera. Oh, yeah, man. That's yeah. wonderful. So, you know, I stroll into this beautiful shop in Little Havana, and, and I see Sandy, and I see Willie, and I see the rollers, and I'm like immediately transported, right, back to my roots, back to those childhood memories and i'm like this is awesome and uh willie was getting ready for for a trade show and and uh and i told willie listen i'll barter i'll i'll design you give me cigars well, you have a deal <laughs> you know i just wanted to get into it and uh and and that's what we did i asked uh, i asked willie to barter for cigars and uh that's how it started i mean uh, my business partner and i back in 2007 um, we, we set up shop on Espanola way. We signed a three year lease, uh, on an office space and uh, the rest is history. Do you want to mention your business partner? Is he somebody that we all know, or is he behind the scenes? Uh, he's behind the scenes. Um, uh, he doesn't smoke. He doesn't speak English, <laughs> Cleveland cook. And beautiful, but, <laughs> beautiful. We'll, we'll keep it secret then. Don't worry. <laughs> so he handles, you know, all of the other advertising work that is, you know, not, tobacco related right. so uh you know we we handle those uh uh two sides of the business you know parallel to each other but uh, it's the same service 
but you know, package in, in, in a different envelope, so to speak. Wonderful, wonderful. So I've I've got three people now, Umberto, literally, want to start their own brand. And I don't I don't even know what to tell people anymore because they should I, enter. I, I I you know I wish uh, start companies would enter. <laughs> you know, it's like you know, here tag along with this guy for a week and see how you. <laughs> You know, That's they would great. change their they would change their minds quickly. You know, everybody else interns, right? Yeah. Why 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 don't cigar yeah. companies intern? Because they like bringing on new suckers. <laughs> I <was gonna> say. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's um uh, it's um it's it's uh you know we were talking you know behind behind uh, the cameras how uh, somebody looking from the outside in you know they they look at the cigar industry and. Uh, they just don't have an idea of how much uh, time, effort, and money it takes to actually launch a cigar brand off the ground. It's uh, it's a daunting task, uh, and as always, if you don't surround yourself with the right people, it's just going to be that much harder, and it's going to take that much longer. Now, is that is that part of the service that you provide is that little bit of advice up front if someone talks to you? Because I'd have to imagine it seems like, you know, that can be pretty evident and obvious at certain points. Well, you know, it's you know, we go we go through the normal, uh, you know, conversations and, you know, do you have this in place? Do you have that in place? And, and you know, I've, I I just go and, and start talking and, and I just hear silence on the other end. It's like, right. oh, I'm sorry. I'm just taking notes. I didn't realize this was, you know, so complicated. So I, I get that, you know, all the time. So when you ask them a question, instead of answering, they're taking notes. They're taking notes all the time, you know, <laughs> right. because I, yeah. just put, I just put on a clinic, you know. I, you know, it's uh, I ask a lot of questions. I ask specific questions. And, mm -hmm. and, and I need to know right off the bat if, if, if these people are just picking my brain, are they serious uh, about really getting this thing going? And if they're going to have, uh, you know, the, the resources to actually uh, see it through. I, that, in fact, I was just thinking that out of, out of just curiosity, just uh, from a, uh, a percentage of uh, once they get that boom, one on one right out of the gate. How many of them actually follow up? Do you actually hear from them? <laughs> hear from them the drop second off. time? The the, the percentage is uh, it's uh, it's very little. Uh, it's radio silence. Uh, you know the percentage has got to be you know in the single digits. You know the people who actually come back and say, hey, listen, I, I got a hold of the attorney, got this thing registered, I have it secured, it finally went through. Let's go. So you know th wow. that determination it's it's key and and. Mm. You know, it takes a lot of um, um, a lot of years of, of of actually, you know, being in the trenches, you know, to to pick out, you know, the, the people who are serious uh, about committing to the journey. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Because I got to tell you, uh, this, not just all your knowledge, but I was excited when uh, when. Um, Dr. Gabby actually said you were going to be on because I've seen your work. I've been to IPCPR a few years now. I'm sorry, PCA, just yeah. the force of habit. It's like and Prince, formerly known as. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the trade show formerly known That's as great. IPCPR. And uh, I was blown away and, and it kind of refreshed my memory because I went back online and, and, and took a look and there was a photo of you in front of uh, the Villiger, uh, the Villiger booth. And what was that? Was that 2018? Was that uh... that that was 2018? Uh, my first IPC IPCPR was back in 2011 in yeah. uh, in Vegas, and um, it uh, we've had so some you know so many good memories in, in Vegas. I've been fortunate enough to uh, work with the Torano family with uh, Roberto Pelayo Duran from C uh, Duran Cigars, and uh, back in in 20. In, uh, in 2014, we won uh, Best yeah. in Show for Small Exhibitor uh, with Duran Cigars. Two years ago, 2018, uh, we won Best in Show for Large Exhibitor uh, with Villiger Cigars. So uh, definitely, um, uh, you know, it's a funny story because, um, you know, I'm either flying on my birthday to Vegas or I'm either flying back on my birthday uh, from Vegas. So I decided... 
that, you know, 2018, you know, was, um, I, I think we had the fire. AJ Fernandez booth caught on fire, right? Yes, so, yes, so yes. It, it, it was just one of those things. So uh, that Monday, that Monday, I decided to, uh, you know, my wife, my friends and I, we took we took off to uh, to the Grand Canyon and and and, and we had a great Beautiful. time out there. Huh. So you know, there's no cell phone reception over there, right? So I skipped out on the last day of the show, right? It's half day and whatnot. So we're coming back from the Grand Canyon and my phone is blowing up. Congratulations, like, did I get somebody pregnant? What's going on? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, but you know, it was uh, it was uh, best in show IPCPR uh, large exhibitor. Uh, Villiger cigars. Um, you know, it was just uh, another yeah, great, uh, another great recognition, another great accolade uh, that we can add to the resume. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, we're just putting in a lot of hard work uh, with those guys. We've been working with uh, Mr. Rene Castañeda here in Miami and the Village yes. crew uh, for for over four years now. So, wow, uh, I was blown away. I actually walked through their booth twice because guys i tell you the work on it it was just exquisite and i was thinking to myself what went into this project and then after i saw that i'm like okay i'm gonna go back to my booth now <laughs> well That's listen funny. you know if, if you don't have the right manufacturer you know again you know it could look beautiful on screen but you know as far as the the overall look presentation set up the breakdown you know that that credit has to go to uh joan uh, from Global Displays here in Miami, she does a great job. Amazing, that's great. We but got there's a, a lot. I mean, we're we're talking about the trade show, but there's I imagine my co-hosts too. We want to kind of wind it back because there are a million and one steps before you're going to show up with a with a booth like that. So, uh, well, we we actually have a question um, that was asked. Go for it. Um, I'm going to ask the first one because I think Jeff Desenzio of Rolling Stogie Cigars up in the uh, Pittsburgh area. Um, the second question, it seems like uh, you, you might have to pay a retainer for those questions because I think. He, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, all kidding aside, Jeff's a great guy. He said he wants to ask you, what are the top three priorities that must be in place to start your own cigar brand? Man, I would I would I would say, uh, you know, go to, uh, you know, to the trademark uh, website, the USPTO, uh, which is a trademark uh, office and uh, and do your research. Uh, make sure that uh, I would say uh, whenever you hone in on the name, make sure it's sweet, short, easy to pronounce. Uh, make sure you, you can legally defend it in the future. You know, if, if your brand really takes off. Uh, you don't want to have, uh, you know, letters coming in, you know, it, it, it looks like my brand or it sounds like my brand. So uh, make sure you uh, you can uh, legally trademark it, make sure you can legally defend it. And then, you know, because uh, if, if, you, if you have a brand and you're not selling shit, nobody gives a crap. Right. It, it, it's only when it takes off that, yeah. really, you know, people are going to know. They'll it. come after you. Yeah. Well, you can't say that, Gabby. <laughs> not mean? from our experience. <laughs> well, yeah. No, no, no. I'll get a good side though, but, uh, but but you partnered up with the powerhouse of a factory, so they. Well, I, I stand corrected. I did. I, I realized that um, it was your shadow looming over behind me <laughs> that got that 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 uh, really in, you know kind of uh, provoked that cease and desist, but. Uh, it was just a little joke between Gabby and I. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry. You better thought. <laughs> you, you you don't want those uh, cease and desist letters in the mail. But I would say, uh, do the research. Make sure you find uh, a, a name you can you can trademark. Uh, make sure uh, you can legally defend it, and then uh, make sure you you hire you know a, a, the right graphic designer is going to you know meet and exceed your expectations uh, when it comes to your logo. They're going to deliver the right format the right files, the right look and feel, they're going to do their homework. Uh, and then, you know, you can start, the, you know, the next phase. Can you right. please elaborate on? Yes, please. No, I, I, my question is this, because I've, I've been through this seven, eight times with different brands, right? And I see a lot of mistakes made. And the biggest mistake made is that when you go to a cigar factory, that factory makes cigars. They don't do anything else. Our, our job is not to develop a brand, design a brand, print the brand, make the box. Like 
come to us when everything's finished and then we'll put it together. Mind you, we still have to develop the blends, right? But after you get the trademark done and you got the name done, and sh should you launch a brand if you don't have a trademark? Or, you you, you know, c can you launch a brand? I think this is a conversation with the lawyers, right, Umberto? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you know, you're rolling, you're rolling the dice there because, um, you know, if, if you're going to make it, you know, if, if you don't mind, you know, building something and then breaking it apart and then building it again, then, yeah. um, you know, you know, that's kind of like a hobby <laughs> approach. Let me see if it takes off. If it takes off, then yeah, I'll give it a shot. But, you know, usually, uh, we encourage people to, uh, measure twice and cut once, you know, uh, those kind of mistakes, uh, you know, they, they cost a lot of money. You know, I respect that a lot because you respect other people's money and you're not going to jeopardize somebody's plans because they don't really know what they're doing. And that's the problem in this industry is that when people sit outside and look in, like we talked before the show, they don't realize 10 years of work, millions of dollars to get to, you know, where you've and, and where we're at hasn't really we, we still we're still trying to figure stuff out. No. This this is a business of decades. It's not a, it's not a hit and run business. And, you know, uh, I, I appreciate everybody that comes on board, uh, you know, with Cigar Package Design. Eventually, we become family. Uh, you know, we're not out to make a quick buck. I would be doing uh, a disservice to you. Uh, and I tell people up front, listen, whether we end up working together or not, my job is to point you in the right direction. Uh, in life, whether it's personal or professional, it's all about timing. So if the timing is not, is, is not right, you know, we're, we're probably not going to end up working together. But you know, we'll come around full circle. You know, it's all about timing. But my job is to point you in the right direction. Don't waste your time and not, you know, make you waste your money. That upfront work you talked about is really important. And, and the joke between Gabby and I was, you know, I have a s small uh, boutique company. And when we first started off, I had El Viajante was the brand name. And I got a letter saying, hey, that's a little too close to our name. And I was lucky enough to get that letter very early on. Right. And, 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 and I looked at it and I was like, yeah, well, and I kind of sent back and I said, oh, I'm sorry, much respect, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, okay, no problem. So the next step was, what's the name going to be? Stogie Road Cigars? Yeah. Trademark. Boom. You know, what's the brand? What's the blend going to be? Sweetgrass Gringo? Trademark. Boom. So, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to get that letter early on. I mean, the cigars didn't even leave Honduras at the time. They are still there. So wow. but we got that just, to, I mean, early enough to, for it to be such an eye opening where a couple of years, several years down the road, if you, you know, if things do boom, uh, you know, it's, well, here's, I'll be here's the analogy. Stroking, stroking a check for, for somebody, you know. I mean, how much, how, how much would it cost to reband 100,000 cigars? Exactly. I mean, to rebox yeah. 100,000 cigars. Yep. Right. So I, I'm sorry, I cut you off, uh, Gabby. No, no, no. My my thing is, it's very, it's the analogy is, I think, very simple. It's like you have a construction company and you pull up and you start building a structure on a piece of land that you don't own the rights to. That's exactly what it means to launch a cigar brand into the market and not putting in the six months to a year's worth of time. See, a lot of people waste so much time. They want to be in the industry, but... They let year after year go by, and then when they knock on our door, they're sitting there. Hey, what's my first step? Well, your first step you should have done while you were sitting doing nothing a year ago. You know, all the clerical work, all the legal stuff, all the compliance. And then once you get the name locked down, then you can call our man at Cigar Package Design and, you know, share your vision with him. And let me ask you, because you got your finger on the pulse with this whole – I feel the – our, our family goes back probably 80, 90 years into the textiles industry, right? And it, textiles was very fashion geared. Every year, every season, there's new. Tell, tell us about how fashion affects designs, brands. I mean, are, are you guys like trying to think six months ahead? Are you thinking a year ahead? Do you guys ever talk, hey, let's create something that's timeless? Tell us about a little bit of the creative component that you um walk your customers through well you know it's uh you know we start with strategy i mean you know uh we we tell people you know what what is your strategy what is what is your ideal customer 
um, you know, we start, you know, we start asking, you know, those those deep questions because if we don't start with strategy, uh, here's what happens. Um, if if you come to me with, um, you know, you're, you're 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 basically trying to solve a problem, right? But if if I let you self-diagnose the problem, yes, then you know, again, we go back to you know, I'm doing a disservice to you, right? Because you know, if if people even spend, you know, let's not go six months or a year doing the research, right? Let's go, let's say they go, you know, three, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, right? So they do the research. Hey, listen, you know, you're a doctor, right? So how about I come to you and I say, Gabby, look, I spent three weeks on WebMD because I'm feeling this, and you know, based on my research. I yeah. think I have this and look, look at all the paperwork that I printed. It's just pages and pages and pages. You know, it, I, you know, this is what I have. You know, I just need a prescription. You give me the prescription. Little did you know I was pre-diabetic. The stuff that you gave me yeah. was deadly and I die. It's not it, my it, fault. You're the professional. You should have, you should have, yeah. you should have never let me self-diagnose the problem. And what happens is when you skip strategy, uh, you're not bridging the gap between what is design and what is a business challenge, right? Because if you come to me, I say, I need a brand. Okay, why do you need a brand and who do you need a brand for? What are your core values? What is your brand yeah. statement? What do you stand for? You know, what are you setting out to do? You know, if I'm not tackling all those questions, then I'm just, I'm making it pretty. You liked it? Red, gold foil, here you go. You know, six months are going to go by and then you're going you're to come back again and you're going to say, hey, I, you know, we missed the mark. Uh, you know, really my demographic, my 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 ideal customer is is not really gravitating towards the brand. You know, they're being, you know, they, they're they they're turned off by it. The colors are off. So, you know, it's um, some customers, some clients don't see the value in, in strategy. But it, it's important is at the root of everything. You know, if, if you were to group, you know, uh, the guys from Drew Estate, the guys from Miami Cigar Company, the guys from Villiger. I mean, you know, you, you get a mental picture of what that looks like. Jonathan Drew, right? Willie, you know, Nestor Miranda. Right. You, you, so your, your 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 vibe attracts your tribe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like once once you once once you know your ideal customer, it's like when you buy a red car, you drive out of the lot. Damn, look at all these red cars. Why? Yeah. Because now you know exactly what you're looking for. You bring a very some, interesting. Sometimes people come in a little too ambitious that uh, they want, you know, they want to take over the world. My demographic <laughs> is everybody. I want to appeal to the masses. I want to appeal to the cigar connoisseur. I want to appear to pretty much everybody across the board male female across the board you know this is why this is why brand strategy is so important because you know what that does to that net it, it narrows mm. it down you know what i mean mm. focus yeah. focus yeah. on one group and then you can start that ripple effect right that it just keeps you know that ripple effect just keeps on growing and growing and growing and other people are going to take notice of your brand but if you try to appeal to everybody, you're going to appeal to no one. Yeah. So, you know, it's, you know, sometimes people ask me, you know, it's like, well, you know, it's like, I really don't know who my client is. Um, well, here's, the, here's your client. There. You are your client. You know what I mean? What do you, what do you like to do in the downtime? You know, what piques your, 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 your attention, your interest, you know, so sometimes I'm just like, you know, I'll just put up a mirror. There's your ideal client. You are your ideal client. So look, the three of us have brands, right? We're in the industry. I want to be the first to just say my brand has problems. It's not perfect. It's over the past seven, eight years, it's been going in the direction that I want it to go. But it's been a lot of painful and expensive mistakes. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show tonight. Because there's 47 companies that are a part of the Boutique Cigar Association. And there's, I got two or three guys tonight tuning in because all the questions that they have, I, I honestly, if I gave them the answers, I would be making a big mistake. It's not my area of expertise. 
That's what having you on the show. I know da, uh, Dove Cigars has got nightmares of. I'm just kidding, Armin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the biggest. Wow. <laughs> we love you, Armin. Where are you going with that? And uh, our dear friend Kerry, he, he doesn't know if he's going north, south, east, or west. I'm just kidding. But we we all want to get you like a, tonight, I'm going to drop roasted. Gabby in about a second. I know. Boom. Right? No, but seriously, having you on, man, is great. You bring a – the thing with medicine, you brought up medicine. In, in medicine, there's specialties for everything, right? I don't care what it is that you have. You, there's, there's actually specialties within specialties. Absolutely. In, in the cigar industry, sometimes you get a lot of companies that are one-man shows. They do everything. You know, they make the blend. They hit the road. They travel. They sell. They pack orders. And I fall victim to that, right? But, man, what you do is so valuable that – I'll tell you now, and, and it's not because you or you're on the show, but every person that comes to me from now on, your phone's going to ring. And I'm going to make sure they're people worth your time, right? Thank 100%. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, it's um, uh, you'll be surprised uh, how many uh, how many times I have been invited uh, into bigger companies um, just to uh, bring that 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 spark, you Beautiful. know, ignite that fire. Um, marketing directors come to me and, and they tell me all the time, you know, my team, it's like they come in, they clock, coffee, computer, clock out. So, you know what? Wow. It, it's, it's a very stagnant atmosphere for created in, individuals. So yes, yes, yes. sometimes they need me to come in and provide that spark to get the creative reels going again. And, um, you know, I'll come up with some crazy ideas. I don't care. I don't work there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, what I'm doing is, you know, I'm trying to stir up the atmosphere, uh, uh, get those creative individuals um, uh, motivated again, because it's just, uh, you know, and, and, and mind you, this is why, you know, uh, when I started, when I graduated, when I got my bachelor's degree in graphic design, uh, you know, it's, I started looking for work and it was like, okay, minimum three years experience, uh, this, that, and the other. So, I knew I had to put in the work. Uh, I was very fortunate to 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 land in a company uh, where I was able to make an impact, uh, move up the ladder quickly, and I had an amazing boss. Uh, and and as soon as I got my five years experience, uh, you know, my business partner and I we opened up uh, we opened up our shop. Uh, I knew that I did not want to work for an advertising agency because you you assigned to uh, a, an account. And, you know, maybe the Pepsi logo is, is all you're going to see for the rest of the, you know, your days. Yeah. Wow. wow. Well, I was going to ask you what percentage of business or, or the, the folks that you work with are new compared to established companies that are looking for someone to reinvent the brand, a blend or, or whatever they want to do. You know, I get a little bit of everything. Um, you know, I, um, uh, if, if anything, you know, we're pretty hands-on. Uh, we don't outsource anything. Uh, if we're not creating it ourselves, we tell you who is. Um, so we're hands-on. Sometimes, you know, um, a brand, uh, it's not broken. You know, it's just, you know, somewhere along the way, they've, they've lost a little bit of their essence uh, and their roots, and they, need to, and they need to get back on track. You know, sometimes... Um, an overhaul, you know, a complete right. overhaul, uh, it's, it's, it's required or it's all for, and, uh, you know, we've seen some, you know, major brands go through that overhaul. I mean, I can think of Camacho, if you think of what Camacho was before and what it is now, you know, with the, you know, yeah, with the big, the thick scorpions and all that stuff. Right. So, um, you know, they were going for, for a specific audience mm -hmm. there, but, you know, sometimes, you know, they, they want a complete overhaul. Um, you know, I tell people, look, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, why do you want to... actually, I try to talk them out of it. <laughs> like, well, you know, why do you want to do that? I find myself asking more why questions than what questions, right? Like, what is it that you want? What color do you want? No. Why do you want that color? Why do you want that change? Right? Because I'm able to dig deeper. And, 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 and what the, the root of the problem is, you know, why do you want to change it? Well, why I questions mean, are, are digging into the person and making it their own and getting by and where what questions 
are completely, you know, being directional. Right. I just, I just want to make sure that, um, um, you know, whatever, you know, I, I tell people all right. the time, look, I want to be intentional about, about what it is that we're doing. Yes. So I want to make sure that, uh, you, you know, those changes are not coming from like, you know, like, oh, I saw this trend, you know, maybe we should change it to that. That looks pretty cool. Let's change it to that. Why do you want to change it to that? You know, do you want to look like those other guys or do you want to put your own fingerprint on your brand? So I just want to make sure they're not influenced by, uh, by trends, by, you know, by what the wife said or, you know, what the other business partner said. You know, I want to make sure that these are th these 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 changes or these modifications or these revisions are coming from a true place and not you know, anything superficial, you, you know, you just want to keep up with whatever, you know, everybody else is doing. So I tell think, me, I think that goes back to what Gabby's question was with, you know, keeping in tune with what the trends are, because sometimes you can, folks can get wrapped around the axle on the trends. And sometimes these trends are a flash of the pan. You know, it's, it's, it's the ability to take something that is going to be trendy, but timeless. Absolutely. Now, you know, one one trend that has stuck is, um, you know, larger, uh, larger cigar bands. You know, now we see, you know, a lot more real estate on the bands. You know, they're not as small as, the, you know, as they once were. Yeah. So, God, they used to be tiny. Um, very minimal, tiny. Uh, you know, now, you know, you have you have a lot of real estate uh, on, on cigar bands. So that that one actually has stuck. Uh, and, um, you know, um, I've seen um, I've seen more uh, paper wrap boxes uh, coming back into the market. So uh, I think you know, Alec, Alec Bradley put out a, a paper wrap box. Uh, the the Cuevas Reserva uh, for Mister uh, Luis Cuevas from Casa Cueva Cigars. That was the last paper wrap box that we did. Uh, we call it the uh, the uh, Cuban Vintage on that box so when you when you say paper you mean like a dress style box, the dress right? box like senor gabby was talking about that early this this morning. i was telling armin that I, I think the next brand should be a dress style box i really here's the thing i want to ask you this real i'll be real blunt right when we look at the cigar industry today compared to 30 years ago right now 30 years ago we had all the traditional cigar making companies that were very like small bands they weren't really that loud on the shelf. Would you would you say that now, instead of just having cigar companies, now these companies are also marketing companies? Because absolutely, there, there's a lot of marketing companies, and the product that they sell is a cigar. It, it's it's like you know McDonald's sells burgers, but they're actually in the real estate business. I see a lot of companies in the cigar yeah. industry that. Did you care? <laughs> you all right? <laughs> no, I was saying yeah. Oh, I mean, shit. Okay, okay. I thought, what, I you think that. I had like a mini stroke or something? Yeah. It's like, no. I was like, yeah, I'm great. <laughs> I love that sound. I thought it was like, a, yep, good, good yeah. question. Yeah. My thing is like, and that's why Ooh, I, uh, a guy yeah. like me that is a traditionalist, a you know, cigar factory, traditional family history going back to 1901. And this is not about me. This is about, but I want to put this out there. Like, should you enter the cigar industry competing with cigar makers or competing with marketing companies that are out there camacho you say they did a change camacho went through an exorcism when they came out with their with their new style everything changed then Tarania followed suit and then everybody started coming out with yeah. big bands and trying to be the loudest on the shelf and then you know you take a cigar that's just sitting there with a little band and just people just walk right by it hey, what, is, every, what is going on man who do we who do, whose ass do we kick for doing that Hmm. Well, um, you can start with me. <laughs> oh no! Because <laughs> you know we're 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 at, we're at the forefront of 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 making all those uh, all those design changes and 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 pushing the envelope. And uh, you know everything is so visual. I mean, I don't think um, you know um, there's only a handful of companies that that can afford not to advertise, not to have a sales team. Um, you know, but you know, that's already grandfathered in, you know, if you're coming into the cigar industry now, uh, you know, you, you have to be willing to put up a million dollars worth of marketing to put, you know, to sell 
a million sticks. Thank you. Thank you. And and that's and that's just and, how and, it is. And, and I think you're being, and you're leaving out the effort. Everybody thinks, oh, how much? I everybody says, what does it take to launch a brand? Five, ten thousand dollars. I'm just, I just stay there quiet. Like this guy has no idea. <laughs> they have no idea. They they think you know what? It happens because I come across as a regular person. I'm very humble. I talk to everybody. I'm, you know, these guys too. They're great. Carrie, Armin, we're like very nonchalant, but. People think that we just like snapped our fingers and, you know, we're in a hundred stores just like that. No, <laughs> it's not the case. You know, it, it's really been, it, it's not only been the money, but it's been the effort. You know, well, and well, it's mostly time, effort. effort, time, <laughs> effort, money. And, um, uh, you know, when, when Passion. you're in it, yeah, when you're in it, it's, it's, it's really 24 seven. I mean, it, it, it really is 24 seven. You're thinking about uh, your neck, you know, the next shipment you're taking that, you know, you're thinking about the, uh, the cigars that are aging, you know, you're thinking about the rollers, uh, at the factory, you know, you're thinking about, uh, uh, you know, when other SKU numbers going to come in, you know, you're thinking, you know, uh, the packaging, what's the inventory on the packaging? Do we need more bands? Do we need more boxes? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's uh, it's a well orchestrated chaos. Now try shipping orders all over the world, and every country has different. It, it has taken me forever to learn every country's requirements to export to ship products to them. <laughs> and just when you have it figured out, they change it on you again. And, and the irony of that is, I have other cigar manufacturers, and this is quite an. I'm humbled by this. They'll actually ship their product to me, and then I ship it to that country for them because they just haven't figured it out yet. Wow. I mean, it's this is a really challenging industry. It's not as easy as you make it seem. <laughs> well, you know, listen, you know, if if um, if if I was to uh, lay out a common denominator of, of everyone that I work with, you know, a, they really want to cement in place uh, you know, craftsmanship, history, tradition, family, you know, they're building their legacy. You know what I mean? It's like, what am I going to leave behind once I'm gone? Uh, and, you know, I truly envy, uh, you know, uh, Yadi, you know, uh, Gonzalez from uh, yeah, I love you know, her, yeah. FDG Cigars, you know, she gets to work with her dad every day. Uh, you know, walk, you know, back in the day, walking into the Tarana family, you know, you see Carlos Senior, you see Charlie, his son, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, at yeah. the helm of the company. Yeah. And, and then you see Carlos Yaka, you know, Tarana, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, you know, in charge of operations. And you see Jack and, you know, it's family. You see Carol, their sister, you know, she was doing, uh, you know, all the bookkeeping and all that stuff. So it's really, it's a family. That's why I say, you know, my clients become family very quickly because this industry it's 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 all it's it's all about family it's all about community it, yes, it's sir. it's all about brotherhood so uh, this is this is i've you know out of all the <laughs> out, of, out of all the companies out of all the industries you know whether it's uh uh food and beverage apparel hospitality uh you know uh restaurants nightclubs uh you know over the past you know over the past 12, 13 years, you know, we've done a lot of work for a lot of people. Uh, there is no industry like the cigar industry. You you can walk into any cigar shop and uh, you'll strike up a conversation. Everybody's going to say hello. Yeah. Um, so it's not unlike any other industry and, and it keeps on pulling me back. So, Umberto, uh, tell me about your wheelhouse, right? Like, say I have this crazy idea. I want to do an ashtray or I need a brochure for my company or... I want to do banner stands or, you know, I, I need somebody to like, I want to start doing series of events across the country. And what's my look going to be? Are, are you the guy we call? Oh, I mean, absolutely. We do uh, pop up banners, uh, shelf talkers. Uh, we do uh, tabletop displays. Uh, we do uh, everything to promote the event. Um, you know, we have uh, every everything in place to do the uh, the table skirts. Uh, for your presentation table, um, you name it, you name it, signage, you name it, we do it all. That's fantastic. You know, I kind of know where Dr. Gabby's going with that. It uh, looks like we're going to have a lot of conversations in the very near future. Yeah. Well, it's good stuff, man, because 
my thing is this, right? I, I and I'm only asking this because I'm very selfish, right? And I, I'm interested in doing like a really beautiful ashtray design. Uh, it's time to release one. I'm sure. I think Armin did one already, but yeah, I, I want mine done to really represent our family, you know, and what we nice. what we represent. You know, I, nice. I know there's a lot of manufacturers out there overseas, but I'm not. I wouldn't dare tackle the design of, of a, something that beautiful, you know? Well, you know, listen, uh, it's, um, and again, you know, it's just a little bit of uh, reverse engineering, you know, you know, what would you like to have done and then just uh, work backwards? Uh, you know, who can get this done? Uh, who can deliver on time? Um, wow, wow. You know, it's, um, it's, it's a little bit of reverse engineering, you know, it, uh, we see how complex you want to take it and then we walk backwards. So, you know, are you looking at, uh, you know, can, can it be done uh, in the States? Can it be done outside? Uh, who do we send it to? And, you know, who can we trust, we know, with this project? Um, you'll be surprised of all the 3D modeling uh, uh, wow. rendering softwares that, that we have today where, you know, you could take a look at that ashtray in, in, in a 3D space wow. Wow. And, you, and, and you can, t you know, rotate it and see it from top, bottom, sideways. And, you know, apply different finishes to it. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, um, this is, you know, th th those are just one of the tools that I've I've been implementing over the past uh, two years or so. Um, you know, whether it is, you know, packaging, cigar bands, um, we've we've implemented this 3D program where um, people get a, a, a true sense of how that artwork is going to look wrapped around the cigar. Because, you know, when we start, I know you like Illustrator, Gabby. I like playing with it, yeah. <laughs> when, uh, you know, when we work in Illustrator with all that stuff, everything is flat looking. So I got to show I you something. You're going to laugh and you're, you're going you're gonna to really appreciate this, right? <laughs> Uh-oh. Five, five years ago, I was designing our coffee bag, right? Here's my 3D display. And, and then luckily, it, it really came out nice, you know? Very nice, but, but I I don't want to go through that again. This this, if I do that today, where our company is today, I, I would probably lose ten times more <laughs> of what it would pay me to have someone do this for me. I, I so, can't. Is that a bag for one cup of coffee? No, I, I also have one. Of, <laughs> the I, other I always, one. Oh, the other it's like one. No, the Keurig. Good. It's like the the, the Keurig one. Well, that's it's all, the that's coffee weird. coffee. And I keep this so that my f so that my beautiful kids. I was going to say a bad word, but I'm not. <laughs> I, I keep this kind of stuff so my kids can appreciate how we went from here to here. You know, it, it's it's been struggling, man. And I get, I love this. I get a phone call. Hey, I want to launch a brand. Can you help me out? Like, I'm, check your I'm, inbox. Check your inbox. The design is already there. <laughs> no, but, but my thing is, I, I got a company to run, and these guys got their companies to run. Our job is not. Our job is to sell our stuff, not design other people's stuff. Exactly. It, I, I, absolutely. Your 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 job is to keep those two hundred butts on the chairs rolling cigars down at the factory. I'm not even going to answer those emails anymore. I'm just going to send your link <laughs> forward and just call it a day. <laughs> hey, Doctor Caffey, uh, David Clark Wayne said he has an ashtray idea for you. Oh, I hope it's interesting, man. Uh oh. David, you have to make sure it's in a 3D model format, though. Okay. Well, David, I love that the whole rotating. I mean, that's you really yeah, get man. a feel for it. It's 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 absolutely incredible um, what we've been able to uh, to generate uh, over the past uh, two years. Um, we are getting approvals fifty times faster uh, because mm. of the implementation of uh, 3D mockups. Wow. So do you do the same for a cigar band? Like, are you able to generate, okay, this is what it's going to look like once it prints? Absolutely. And then when, when, when uh, do you oversee the printing process? Uh, I, I limit myself to do press checks. I want to make sure that uh, okay. um, the, uh, the, the foil is uh, registering correctly, the embossing is registering correctly, and that, you know, the colors are reproducing accurately. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we have our, we have our Pantone, uh, swatch books. Uh, so we always have those on hand and, uh, you know, press checks, um, they can be fun, but for the most part, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work because, um, 
you know, printing is just, you know, is is not an exact science. You know, you have, yeah. you know, different rollers and different presses and, you know, you, you, you have this color go by first and then the next color is coming in and then you're stamping it with a foil and then you're embossing it with another one. So all those things got to line up, uh, you know, so, you, you know, you don't have, you know, uh, off registering um, in your packaging, especially when you're doing uh, uh, inside uh, vistas for boxes. You know what I mean? Those mistakes are that much noticeable uh, whenever it is larger <laughs> on a larger format. Next subject. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I hit a chord there. I think I hit a chord. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> I, I, I had a, I had a printer. Uh, he had done about a thousand vistas for four different brands that I was doing. And now for a commercial break. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually yeah. It, it's a good time, Carrie, if you want to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to do go it. For it. We're going to do our quick commercial break. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow premium cigar smokers, please take the time to visit, support, and join Cigar Rights of America. They can be found at www.cigarrights.org. Thank you. And we are back. I so to, I got to tell you what I did. I get to the printer. I look at the vistas. Nothing looked like the designs that were sent to him. Nothing. Oh, oh. The colors were off. You know, brother, I, I all I saw was mountains of stacks of paper, right? This guy really, because he, he, his thing was he wanted to impress me, right? How fast he could do it. I, I just left. I, I just walked out. I just left. I said, throw everything <laughs> in the trash. Throw everything wow. in the trash. It was a nightmare. Yeah. And that was the last time I ever did a project where I didn't have somebody standing there looking at it's tough, man. You know, look, there's now, printers. We, we, Go ahead. We, we do press checks. Uh, you know, if you're doing a hundred of anything, listen, I'll, I'll jump in the car. I'll drive four hours and I'll drive uh, and I'll drive back the same day. I mean, but, you know, somebody has to be there. And, uh, and, and who better than, you know, the person who created everything, the person who knows exactly what PMS color should be on this background, uh, you know, what metallic ink should go next what foil should go uh you know third and you know and and all the uh you know the embossing elements that go there you know it's uh it's uh you you, you only have one chance to make a first impression and and there's no do-overs mistakes cost money that's the bottom line yeah you know the guys that i see that really suffer in this industry are the guys that um uh, think that because things are done a certain way they think you're ripping them off their, their mind isn't ready to work in the world of premium cigars to develop that amazing brand that's going to be a a hit you know you know it it, uh, it it takes a few a few uh you know ideally it could it, it would only take one crash and burn but sometimes it takes a few crashes right for you to realize right you know i cannot keep on doing the same thing and expecting different results whatever you know and and i tell people look whatever gets measured gets improved if you're not measuring you know your 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 effort your your results then you know what are we doing here we're just spinning our wheels and by the way any comments i'm saying i'm also i'm referring to myself a lot of the time you know where when I first came into the industry and I sat down with a cigar band designer and it was $5,000, I was in shock. But going back now and looking at it, I'll tell you what, if, if you're going to invest $100,000 in a blend, that's chump change to make the cigar look fantastic, you know? Absolutely, especially now where, you know, a humidor has become a, a big old classified, you know, classified ad. You know, you are next to everyone and you are competing <laughs> for that attention. Um, so, like I said, there's no do overs. I mean, it's um, you, you know, you have you have one shot to do the research, to be patient, to do it right, to measure twice, to cut once and execute accordingly. It also explains why when you said earlier how the bigger bands and the wraps around the cigars are became popular and are still popular. It's. You know, 
you know, we have a collection of, of cigar bands from, you know, 100 years ago. They were very small and petite. And now I think everybody realized there's a lot of real estate on that cigar that you can use to advertise. Absolutely. Well, and listen, if, yeah. if you're not using, utilizing yeah. that, I mean, it's great to see the cigar and beautiful, but there's a lot of real estate that you could have designs, artwork, name on it. And when you walk in, it'll stand out within the humidor. Well, we yeah. also, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Umberto. No, and, and you know, it's, um, we've seen a lot of implementation of uh, different um, materials for, you know, that are being used for the bands, you know, some holographic stuff that is going on there, like a lot of shimmery stuff. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, we're always constantly looking for different materials uh, that can, you know, reproduce well, that we can do it in, yeah. a large, in large quantities. Um, uh, but again, it's, it's a very small real estate space. And, you know, you'll be surprised how much stuff we can fit in there, right? It's just three inches across by an inch high. So, And it's always something unique because, like, I, I've seen some cigar bands that's, you know, it, it's not even a band it's a little tchotchke you know like like a little brass knuckle you know like like it would yeah. be used on a like would be used on a monopoly board like an extra monopoly piece um so it is pretty amazing when you see that you know just how creative and inventive people are getting and listen you know it's, uh <laughs> you know for me you know that's the biggest challenge you know i'm a sucker for stories and i i love telling stories on cigar bands you know if uh if I can give you an example, you know, uh, my good friend uh, Luis Cuevas from Cueva Cigars, you know, uh, if you look at his band, um, you you see the, uh, the the Spaniard coat of arms. You know, that's where his family originated from, and then, you know, they uh, they moved to, to to Cuba. They migrated to Cuba, so you see that coat of arms there. Um, and then, you know, now you know they're working out of you know the Dominican Republic. That's where they have their, their factory. So yeah, you you see all those three coat of arms. Uh, this is a generation family, so you see four stars at the top of uh, the cigar band, and um, yeah, is that's that the it right there? yeah, that's the Cuevas Reserva. I think we added a fifth star because Alec, his son, that he's the fifth generation now, yeah, and we and, and we have a uh, we have the U.S. coat of arms on there now. So you know, we love staring, you know, telling stories, you know, through the bands. You know, I think that uh, whenever you have a cigar event. And, and they ask you, hey, so what did you put this here on the band? You know, and, you know, if, if you know, now you're like, you're like, you're like part of the insider information, right? You know, he could tell you, well, look, this represents uh, my family's history, you know, where we came from Spain to Cuba to the Dominican and now in the U.S. Yes, we're, sir. A, we're a fifth generation tobacco growing family. Um, and all of these things are represented in our band. You know, and again, you know, it's it's a small little piece of paper, but we could fit in a lot of stuff in there. You'll be surprised. So well, there's I have a, a question for you. I know a lot of times when somebody comes to you for the design, the band, the box, whatever the case may be, and you get inside their head, okay, I think this is the way we're going to go. Has there ever been an instance where you've actually smoked a particular cigar and actually the cigar did the talking, like after smoking the cigar, it kind of gave you an idea of whether it be a name or a design or something of that nature. So that's a good question, Armin. The question is, do you do the design or do you do the blend first? Well, uh, what, what comes first, right? The chicken or the egg, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of the times, you know, it's like, man, it's been raining down in Nicaragua. The humidity is crazy. These cigars are not drying. <laughs> You know they're not they're not ready yet. Um, so a lot of the times, you know, um, when when we start on a project, you know, these blends are being worked on, and um, it's great to smoke the cigars eventually. But sometimes we don't have that privilege. Uh, I'm interested in MSRP. What is the sure. price point of the cigar? Right? Is this is this a value cigar? Is this uh, you know picadura? Is this a long filler? Right. So I start building a profile. What car does he drive? Where does he live? What watch does he wear? What perfume? Like I start putting together this profile because if 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 we're if we are going to be competing in an in eight to eleven dollar <laughs> price range, 
This guy's brutal, man. This guy's brutal. So if you pull up in chancletas, you know. I was going to say, if you're going by uh, what car we drive and what perfume we wear, I think my uh, cigar band would be a sweat sock. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you're right. You're right. Because, look, if... if if um are you putting lipstick on a pig yeah <laughs> right so but again if thanks if, gabby if, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is but, what the hell I know. and, and listen was, you know you know wow. I, listen I don't, I don't get to taste those blends i don't get to I, I don't get to work on those blends you know i don't you know for the most part i don't get to taste those blends so you know for me it's indifferent you know, I'm interested in what is your MSRP, right? So price point is very important. <clears throat> Who are you going after? Is this is this a is this a cigar that that you can smoke every day, right? It's not going to break the bank. You can spend five six bucks on this cigar and you can pick it up every day, or is this a you know one of those special cigars which is you know nineteen ninety nine and up? So, you know, I I set parameters. You know, I start asking all these questions so I can start building that profile. Wow. So we have Charles Peters from Aruba is asking a few questions. The first <laughs> question he asked back, do you think, well, there, it's a three-layer question. My, I'll start with this, the FDA. When the FDA kind of took their foot off the neck of the cigar industry, obviously you celebrated, I'm sure, right? Absolutely. I mean, because everybody, the printers, everybody in the industry was kind of like doom and gloom. We're, we're all going to die here. Um, that was kind of a rhetorical question. The second thing was, Charles asked, do you think there are too many brands out there? Absolutely not. Fantastic. Do you think, you, do you think there's a lot of uh, craft beers out there? Carrie will answer that. Right. No, you can never have right? too many options. Exactly. Some nice, nice crisp lagers, some IPAs, some hazy IPAs, some nice stouts, right? Look That's at whiskey. That. Look at scotch. Look at wines. Yeah. There, there's absolutely, absolutely no. You can never have, uh, you know, too many uh, varieties. Uh, you know, if you think, if you think, uh, I remember uh, going back to the Tarano days, they had an Exodus 50-year uh, cigar that had, uh, tobaccos from five different countries. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's beautiful. Everyone it's says, oh, the, the Cubans don't have many brands. The Cubans only use one type of tobacco, right? Right. Binder, filler, wrapper. There's only so many varieties. Which is, that is your that is your traditional puro. Right. Right? That's, right. you know, back in Nicaragua, back in Honduras, yeah. un puro is a cigar, right? But right. They, they, they call it puro because binder, wrapper, filler is from the same. Right. It's from but, the same but uh, country. We have, we have we literally have eight to ten countries that can give us not just eight to ten countries, but there's different priming levels. There's different farms. You can go to ten different farms in Nicaragua. The, the same seed will come out different. Absolutely. And not just that. Every cosecha, every harvest is different. So do I think there's a lot of I don't think, you know, we're in an Instagram world right now. If, if, if we all I know I don't I don't invest in cosmetics companies, although I wish I should have about 10 years ago. Right. <laughs> I, I'd be retired right now. But if we look at everything is how does it look in a photo? It's it's like modern day Playboy. You know, Instagram is you know, guys would look the Playboy for the picture. At least I did. I didn't read the articles, Armin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I read the articles. <laughs> yeah. not, even, not, not even the caricatures. No, once in a while. <laughs> There's articles in Playboy. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I tell I, I tell people that uh, you know, uh, cigar package design is on a mission to help ten thousand uh, entrepreneurs successfully launch their cigar brands. I, I, Charles, that that is an absolute no. Yeah, yeah. There are not there there are not too many cigar brands out there. Listen, in two thousand and sixteen, no, two thousand and yeah, 2016, from January through August, when the FDA regulations went into effect, there were 1,900 brands released in the U.S. Because everybody wanted to get them in before that date passed, you know? Right, right. And it's ironic, the year after, there was like 1,200 brands. In, nobody gave a shit. Everyone's was like, oh, substantial equivalents. Yeah, same tobacco, different band. So, right. It's, it's just, uh, you know, nicotine, humidity, and that pectin, whatever. Yeah. You know, that blue is. Yeah. But um, 
There are never too many brands. I think every brand has, here's the thing, and you brought this up, fantastic. Identify your customer, who are you targeting? Everybody has to have a target market. Like we, we have 45 products, why? Because every one of them targets a certain market. And, and, and even though we have that many products, we're still missing like 80% of the segment. If, if I had a cigar band, like with, you know, <laughs> what do you call the knuckle thing that you were talking about? Uh, what, for me? No, the, yeah, the, the brass knuckles. The, the yeah, brass knuckles. Yeah, yeah. That that targets a specific market, right? You know, I mean, everything is designed for somebody. It, it's amazing, you yeah. know. And I, I think what happens with too many brands is you don't innovate. You have to innovate. You have to focus. You have to be intentional. You have to be purposeful. Um, you know, I, I, I think I think there's only a handful of guys in the industry that that blend cigars for their palate. Uh, and, and and that's a start. You know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, somebody's going to like that cigar that 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 you find, uh, you know, very tasteful and, and, and flavorful and and balanced and complex, you know, with tons of smoke, uh, you know, nice, you know, even burn. Uh, but you know, it's, you have to focus. I mean, because, you know, otherwise, you know, you're casting that net too wide and you're just not going to appeal to anyone. If you try to please everybody, you're not going to appeal to anyone. Yeah. You know, we make a cigar line and this will be a lesson for everybody that even wants to get into the industry. We make a cigar that is not my favorite cigar, but it's one of our best sellers. It's a good that, cigar. And, and it yeah, happens. It, Absolutely. It, I, I'm, That's I'm common. confused. You know, I'm, I'm honestly, so what you say is 100% right. Don't make a cigar that you love. Make a cigar that you can market, you can sell, and you can get repeat customers for. You know, it's, some things just work out like that, you know. And again, you know, it's like, you know, that's that's a cigar you're not fond of. But, you know, that's a cigar maybe that, you know, you should be paying a little bit more attention. You should sprinkle a little, little love on that cigar as far as the advertising, you know. And, and we do this exercise um, you know, with clients when we do our strategic uh, workshops where we prioritize goals, right? So um, we, we try goals as short-term, medium, or long-term. Uh, and again, you know, people want to jump into the design and the fun stuff and, you know, they haven't done their, their, their groundwork first. They haven't done the research. But when you prioritize stuff and, we, you know, when you put, you know, certain line items and projects into a table and you, and you prioritize them, uh, you know, you may have to start working on the things you're not really crazy about, but, you know, those are the most doable and the ones that you can tackle on, uh, you know, first. What do you do with yeah, the guy that though, just, uh, so, Go for it, Doc. Armin, go no, ahead. No. I won't forget. Oh, go ahead. okay. Thank you. Um, just out of curiosity, if somebody has done their homework, they've done their due diligence, and they come to you, they're, they're, they want to uh, launch their, their brand, they've never been on the scene before, uh, but they come to you with the idea uh, from the from the get go. They have an idea to launch maybe three or four different blends, and each of those blends perhaps in a few different vitolas. Is that too ambitious? Would you encourage or discourage that, and have them start scale back and start even smaller? Armin, that seems to be the normal now. Mm, yeah, you cannot send a rep. To any cigar shop with one SKU number, that's not going to fly. Right. So that seems to be okay. So you have this one line, right? How many sizes? You have this other line. How many sizes? How many vitolas you got on that on that Habano? How many vitolas you got on that Maduro? How many vitolas you got on the Connecticut? Because showing up to a, a cigar shop with one SKU, that just doesn't fly anymore. So can you go too big if you're really? coming out of the gate for the first time i mean i know now that the fda is uh, scaled back and there's breathing room um is there somewhere where you would say all right well you know it's um scale back you know it's um you know it's a fine line that i have to walk that i have to walk between being a creative consultant and 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 telling you how to how you should run your business you know, uh, you know, it's, you know, am I a manufacturer? No. Am I, have I been in cigar sales? No. Uh, do I do distribution? No. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it's like, 
I, I think it would probably be almost, you know, out of line for me to say, hey, I think you're chewing on something, you know, bigger. You know, you're biting off something, you know, more than you can, you know, chew. But I think it's good to get that perspective, okay. you know. It's good to get different perspective, right? I mean, Absol absolutely. I mean, it doesn't but matter because I know when I came out with my with my brand, I came out with 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 one skew, one brand, one what one one blend, and it worked. It worked well because I knew the clients, I knew the shops, I knew what they were looking for. They liked the fact that I wasn't coming in with multiple vitolas and trying to sell them this big you know, conglomerate, but it was a relationship that I had built with those people because I'm a salesperson and I'm also very genuine. And then that allowed me to continually build upon that and build that credibility. So when there is something new, there is a new Vitola, there is a new blend that they're willing to take, take that on versus getting burnt by some of these new guys who come in with, you know, six Vitolas and, and, and six and three different blends. And it's, it's something that's, that's not going to do well within their shops. But it is really good to get that feedback, like you, like your perspective, to say, okay, great, you know, I appreciate your, your perspective. And it's something that I think you can maybe not start off with, but it's something that you can build into your business plan moving forward and something to strive for. Oh, absolutely. And sometimes th these releases are... are, are are staggered, right? There's, you know, it's like a scaffolding thing. You know, we're gonna drop this one first, but sometimes, you know, you know, I get to work on all that stuff all at once. Right. You know, one of the interesting things is that when a manufacturer makes a blend that is a home run, and then it doesn't look, you know, the the blend is better than the packaging. That's a problem for me. Yeah. And from now on, or you vice have versa. To I'm not vice versa. Yeah. Well, but, but those are one hit wonders. Person. Those those are one hit wonders. You're gonna try them once. You're not gonna go back. Yeah. Them. It's like, man, that looks great. Ooh, that tastes terrible. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I've never experienced that, so I don't know. But but oh. from, from, now, uh -huh. from from now on, people have to graduate from your camp before they come to my camp. Period. That's right. Oh boy. Well, let I'm me ask you. It's a pain to... in the ass to do what you do, man. It, well, God, I mean, it's, it's a lot of moving parts, Gabby. I mean, and I know with, with you and I, I've Gabby and I sat down with, with, with my brand and went through so many different conversations, creativity, the, like you said, uh, you know, who you, you know, were shooting for and blah, blah, blah. And it was a lot of work. And a lot of it was just kind of normal conversations between two buddies. And it was like, Hey, it's a great conversation. We, you should come out with a cigar. Um, but I had a question for you and, um, I, it, and before I had my brand, I, I would visit a lot of cigar shops when I was traveling. I, I visited a, 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 quite a few. 500. And, and, um, and, <laughs> and, and, and I got to know a lot of cigar shop owners, and I got to see a lot of the brands within, within the humidor. And, you know, that was kind of how I came out with the barber pole was what I – is c cigar. I know there are other barber poles. I didn't invent the barber pole. But I did see that there was a lack of a presence within the humidors of a uh, the creativity of of having multiple barber poles, et cetera, et cetera. But when when you take on a client or when when you're discussing a vision with what they want to do, are there certain projects that you won't take on? And and, and you don't have to answer the question, but I'm question. thinking I'm thinking like you know there's some. I'm going to be honest. There's some things I see in the humidor. I look at them like, what in the hell were they thinking? Like, why would you name it that name? Why would you put that photo on there? Why would you make it look like that? I mean, especially before September 9th when we have the FDA breathing down our necks and just the thought process that was being put into these brands, the pictures, the names, it really made me scratch my head. So I'm wondering, are there certain things when someone comes to you and says, Hey, I have a brand, you know, I want to call it, I want to call it heroin. I mean, you know, it's like they just have this ridiculous vision. Or do you just go, listen, slow your roll there, freaking amigo. And let's go in a different direction. Are you or... talking about GTO cigars? <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> no, he, he didn't say heroin. Come on, man. Don't. He, I think he has a cigar called something like that. No, no, not heroin. Oh, no, no. no, there's painkiller. There's anesthesia. There you go. Sorry, painkiller. 
But I, and, and it's uh, but there's yeah, obviously with Dr. Rodriguez being a doctor and everything. There's you know uh, yeah yeah a yeah behind I get it. it. I, but I, I'm, I love I but, love him. I'm yeah, sure. but I'm saying there's you know what I'm talking about, Gabby. I mean, there's some out there in, in Armin that you're looking at. You're like, what the hell were you thinking? Hundred percent. This is America, man. You could I know a, it's America, but I'm asking. You could put a dildo on a cigar and somebody will We buy talked it. about that earlier, and we're going to come out next year with the Viajante Stogiro dildo uh, barber pole. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, listen, there's... So uh, that's you know, what you've been keeping under wraps. All it's, right. a, it's a flesh-colored barber pole. <laughs> you know, is it going to be a barber pole? It'll be a pole. It'll Go ahead, Albert. I'm sorry. No, Albert and I sometimes can, can digress. Well, uh, Kurt, to, to answer your question, um, you know, we uh, we find it healthy uh, to say no uh, often. Um, so absolutely, we turn to clients uh, if we think that are not the right fit. We we don't we don't share the same principles. Uh, we don't share the the same you know uh, goals. You know, to absolutely right. do our best and be intentional, and and elevate the cigar industry as a whole. Right. Um, so we find ourselves saying no these days more often, um, and, and and you know not because you know <laughs> maybe they're not the right clients. You know, just because you know we're that much more busier, but we do say no to to, to projects. Um, you know, we we have a sign at the door that says, you know, if uh, you know a logo is five hundred bucks. If you watch me do it, it's seven fifty. If you tell me what to do, it's a thousand. If you want to hold my hand while I, do, you know, work with the mouse, it's two thousand bucks, right? <laughs> so I don't treat my clients as creative directors. That's why they hire me, right? So yeah. if you let me do my job, I'll let you do your job. We can complement each other, and together we can come up with an amazing brand. But, that's great I agree, to hear. 100%. but I, I appreciate you answering that question. That's great. That's, that's it's great it's, to it's hear. a collaboration. It's a right. collaboration. Right. Ted Ted says put handcuffs on it and it'll do great. Ted, I actually <laughs> think there is a brand out there with handcuffs on it. I'm just saying. Um, Why do I not see these different uh brands? You seem to see all these freaky <laughs> brands, man. I've been around. I've been around 500, 500 shops. You, you get to see a little bit of everything, but uh, that's true. You there know. was a question from Aruba regarding digital marketing and e-commerce. I don't think yes, that's, your, yes. that's not what you do, is it? Uh, who 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 was that question from? Charles Peters from Aruba. He said he needs to get in touch with you. Uh, you know, and again. Um, um, uh, for PR and marketing, uh, we work with a great company. Um, we do um, a lot of sometimes uh, when you when you say digital marketing, you know that's uh, yeah. you know that's 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 it's a very broad term. Uh, you know, do you want to do you want to run ads on different platforms? Do you yes. want to be strategic about uh, a, a certain demographic or a certain platform? You know, it would make sense to advertise where you have the most eyeballs. You know, whether you know that's Facebook yeah. or yeah. LinkedIn. Or Instagram, you know, I would prioritize the one platform where you have the, you know, the, the most audience, uh, and they all have different um, ad campaigns and ad strategies that that you can do. But again, that takes a little bit of reverse engineering. That takes a little bit of, you know, uh, knowing your ideal customer and what is going to be the the look and feel, the messaging, the tone, right? Because if if you're missing the mark, you're not going to resonate, you know, with with the people you're trying to reach. So uh, again, that just uh, a little bit of reverse engineering and 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 crafting, you know, the ideal customer. You know, whether it's an aspirational customer, whether it's a foundational customer, you know, which is your 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 true fan, you know, your loyal customer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you know, uh, you know, where were you as a cigar smoker? five, 10 years ago, you know, what is your entry level customer? What is your loyal customer? What is your aspirational customer, right? So there should be at least three customer wow. profiles that you have to work on. Yeah, I, I, that's a lot to take in. But so you know, I, I... <laughs> when somebody engages, when somebody engages your brand on social media, what is that journey that I go right. on, right? Yeah. What, what is going to lead... Yeah. What does that click turn into? Right. Not not only as a sales funnel and, and, and speaking, you know, behind the scenes and 
you know, uh, return on investment and all that stuff. But, you know, um, what is what, you know, what journey, what experience are you going to offer? You know, everybody's in for, you know, for an experience, for a journey. You know, are you going to, you know, you're going to take me from point A to point B. You know, what is that journey going to look like? What is the experience? You know, it's like when you walk away with a four dollar and twenty five cent cup of coffee out of Starbucks, you feel great. That yeah. cup of coffee. Yeah on your hand feels great when you put on the sleeve it feels even better and when you, you know? when you actually set that that vision then you got to make sure that you're keeping in uh, in um in context your key performance indicators and if you're going for that market are you reaching it if you're going for this particular smoker are you, you know this particular demographics are you reaching it if you want to expand into another market are you reaching that if you're not reaching that key performance indicator what do you need to do to get there or maybe you need to go back and reinvent what you're doing absolutely there's you know how does your brand make me feel when i when i pick up you know one of your cigars what is the what is the experience and listen you are not going to be there to explain it to me i have to experience it on my own so every customer whether it's on a digital platform whether it's at a cigar shop whether you're doing an event these are different touch points right so these different point these different touch points with your customer what is that experience right you know so, and this is a self-reflection on the industry and this will be my last comment for the uh, evening but I, i've learned that anybody can sell one cigar and when you start saying, okay, now let's talk about 10,000 cigars. Now let's talk about 100,000 cigars. Now, if your goal is to establish a company to move a million cigars, I think that's where it gets a lot more complicated. And the people that are selling, you know, small batch, let's say 500, 1,000, 2,000 cigars, I, I, I think that it's a big learning curve to go from point A to point B. B. Point B is, you know, it, you have to put on some really big ass shoes and realize that I know for a fact I'm I, I, I'm already swimming in waters like the water is up to here right now. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to bring you on, because we're at the point where we need to go to phase two and think differently. And what you offer is that, you know, you offer I, I'm bogged down. I, I'm blind right now. I can't see beyond where I've taken our company to. And right. that that's also important because even the guy, what I want to do is even the guy that's starting out now, I don't want him to go through the pain and suffering that I went to. So if he could jump fast forward and, and just sail <clears throat> calmer waters, man, then you're a blessing to everybody. So I'm honored that you came on the show tonight. Thank you, man. Yeah, well, you. listen, I, I appreciate the invite, you know, um, you know, once, uh, you know this 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 whole pandemic started and and you know we were we were on lockdown um you know i decided you know uh to step out of my comfort zone you know as a creative introvert you know i am happily doing my job my creative thinking behind the scenes yeah. behind the curtain in front of the computer but i decided to start sharing what i've learned over the past 10 12, 13 years uh, from from working with different cigar companies. And I started making, you know, short videos. Um, and uh, I, I have, a, I have a, you know, I have a few videos now that, uh, you know, the comment, like, you know, I'm learning so much from your videos. Thanks for sharing. Uh, really learning a lot. Uh, you saved me some money here. You, you know, yeah. wow, you gave me some ideas on, on how to recycle some packaging. You know, maybe one size fits all, you know, just by putting, you know, little, uh, you know, footers on there. And, you know, you can use that for, you know, multiple different packaging. So if uh, if anyone is interested in, 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 in learning a little bit more about that, why you absolutely need a vector logo for your cigar bands, uh, you know, what is the process of trademarking uh, your name and, and, and doing the due diligence on that? Um, you know, how we've implemented all these three renderings, uh, you know, for getting quick uh, client approvals. You know, what is the difference between uh, CMYK colors and Pantone colors? Uh, look up uh, Cigar Package Design on YouTube. Watch some of those videos. And then maybe, 
by then they'll be a little bit more educated by the time you give them my number and they call me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's great. Um, but I, I, I really appreciate the, the invite. I, I'm, I'm truly, I'm truly uh, happy to be here and humbled to be here. Uh, uh, you guys are great. You guys are doing great stuff for the cigar industry. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to what's next and, and collaborating with you all uh, eventually. We're looking forward to it, too. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's great to know for our listeners that uh, it's not that you're out there just working with uh, the likes of Villiger that uh, at any level that you're in this cigar business, whether you're coming in fresh or you're somewhat of a beginner or even a big company looking to just, you know, get out there with something new and innovative, you're the guy to do it. And uh, it's refreshing to know that there is an Umberto Arias out there and uh, you're definitely uh, uh, just an invaluable asset to, to the industry. And uh, I know I learned a lot during this show, so certainly thank you for all that and i i imagine from this day forward there's going to be a lot of dialogue between the four of us absolutely i hope so definitely gabby no man you know, all, all, all those videos that you were talking about this is the world we live in you know we reach people we touch people we educate people we you know a light bulb goes off in everybody's heads when they see your stuff and a lot of I, I, you know, most brand. This is the. I love our industry, but it's a, it's the smallest industry with the biggest egos on the planet, right? But I flushed my ego down the toilet a long time ago because I realized it doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> you know? And yeah. the beautiful thing about what you do is, you know, you're out there. Like, a lot of people are afraid. Oh, they're going to learn my secrets. There are <clears throat> nobody's in your shoes. You're irreplaceable. You're valuable, and and I think that. A lot of the brands that we work with, not just in the past, but moving forward, including my own, would be doing a lot better had you been involved from day one. Well, uh, I, I, would, I would like to think so. Uh, and again, uh, keeping all that information to myself and, and, and be a hoarder, uh, it wouldn't do me any good. Um, I, I think you and I had a conversation where, you know, it's like, why would you want to share uh, all this information? And, and I think that... Uh, there's room for everybody. Um, there's uh, in a world of abundance. There's plenty to go around, and um, you know if uh, if Chef Ramsey can go on national television and 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 show the world how he does his uh, beef Wellington, and and <laughs> re and reveal that 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 amazing recipe, you know, why wouldn't I, you know, do a video on? <clears throat> On, on what you know an embossing plate is uh, absolutely yeah. you know the more and there's more come there's more videos to come you know it's just that uh, right now it's uh construction at the house and you know everything is in boxes and i haven't done a video in a while but um you know they they've been a nice uh, experience you know getting out of you know getting out of my comfort zone and um and, and just you know uh educating people and if i can save somebody you know some money time and and time wasted especially then uh it serve its purpose youtube videos are a lot of work too oh man you know it's uh especially when you're not used to them you know what yeah. i mean yeah yeah <laughs> Been there. Be it's, before it's we brutal. sign on i just want to reiterate that we're talking with umberto arias of cigarpackagedesign.com the most prestigious cigar magazine in the world cigar journal literally just gave him an award for being the best in the business period so there is no there's others but for 2020 actually it was yes yeah, 2020 or 2019 2019 I, I 20, right. for what the uh, the uh, outstanding the award. art award 2020 yeah. 2020 you're, you're 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 the top dog uh if you call anybody else you're wasting your time uh and your money so umberto thank you very much brother i appreciate you Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Armin. Thank you, Gabby. I appreciate it. Our pleasure. And thank, uh, thank you, Umberto. Listen, everybody, hop online. Go to www.cigarpackagedesign.com. Check out the webpage. It's uh, very, very nice. It's beautiful. Um, look around. Look at the great uh, uh, products. Look at look at the great vision. There's uh, look at the team. They have the team on the website. 
Um, check out Cigar Package Design on YouTube as well. I posted both in the comments, so check it out. Uh, we want to thank you again for being on this evening. It's it's an honor, pleasure. Congratulations on uh, on, on the award. Thank you. Uh, outstanding. What a great evening. Um, from Armin and Gabby. Yes, sir. This is Viajante from Protecting Legacy. We want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. Um, we got a guest coming up in the next couple of weeks. You'll we'll see the announcement. We're not going to make the announcement tonight. I still got to hammer down a few things, but it's going to be it's going to be great. So, uh, from all of us here from Protect Legacy, everybody have a great evening, great weekend. Please be safe. Social distance, use a mask and hand sanitizer, and we will see you next Friday at eight p.m. Everybody, please Thank stay you. on for afterwards. Thanks for taking the time to join us this past hour. Our show is dedicated to preserving the boutique cigar industry. Federal regulations have put our entire industry in danger. With your support and sharing our message, we hope to educate and create more awareness about the craft and the art of making traditional premium cigars. 